Welcome to the world of amazing slimy animals. Hi, Henry. I see you have green fingers. Duh. I'm just cleaning up in the garden. Say, where did that yucky stuff come from? Oh, gross. What is it? That's slime, Henry. I can see it's slimy, but how? I just cleaned. No, it's slime. It was left there by an animal making a trail. Excuse me, a trail to what? As if I want to know. It might be from a snail, or maybe a slug. Oh, right. Like those little guys carry around buckets of slime. They don't need to, Henry. They produce the slime from their bodies. Mm, like I said, gross. For some animals, slime can be very useful. Mm, not in my garden. I'm sure I have something to get rid of these slimy animals. <coughs> Henry, are you okay? No. Get those slimy snails and snakes out of here. I hate snakes. Look closer. Snakes aren't slimy at all. It's a myth. I don't care if it's a mister. It looks slimy to me. Snakes have completely dry skin, Henry. Slimy animals are ones which use different kinds of liquids on their bodies or for eating and other things. Salamanders and toads use slime to keep their skin wet when they're out of the water. What? These animals never heard of moisturizer? That's kind of what they're using the mucus for. Excuse me? Mucus. Gesundheit. No, Henry. Mucus means the slime animals make with their bodies. It can help some animals move, like snails. No, I don't like snails. That mucus messes up my garden. When you crawl around on dirt and rocks, you need a little slime to help you smooth your way. Like taking a water slide? Cool. Slime helps animals in many other ways, with giving birth or with setting sticky traps to catch a meal. Well, I'd rather have... <laughs> Don't tell me pizza. No, cheeseburgers. I'm on a diet. How about a slime lunch? Some animals even eat slime. Oh, please. Sucking out the guts of their prey or delicately nibbling it off the skin of their parents. Slime might be useful for some animals, but I don't want it in my garden. Everything has a purpose in nature, Henry. Even slime. Stick around. Get it? <laughs> Stick around? Funny. Very funny. Looks like you've still got a lot of cleaning up to do. It's those snails leaving slime everywhere. But I have just the thing, my patented super vacuum snail sucker! Ta-da! Huh? If it works, of course, I'd say it needs lubricating. Excuse me? It means making something slippery so it moves more easily. Like oiling an engine. Or your body. You know, a lot of animals lubricate themselves for different reasons. Some for protection, others to make them go faster. Okay! Hit it! <laughs> of course, sometimes you can have too much lubrication. And sometimes you can have too much free advice. Just trying to help. Some help. Look, more slugs. Are they the only slimy animal around or what? No, there are slugs. And snails. And puppy dog tails. Huh? Mm, 
just a little slime humor. Joking aside, Henry, slugs and snails are serious slime makers. Try saying that ten times fast. They may be slow, but their mucus helps them stick like glue to plants and rocks and... And my garden! See? Will you forget about your garden for just a second? Lose the slime, guys. I might think about it. Oh, all right. How's this? That's better. Lizards aren't slimy at all. I can tell you that. Maybe not on the outside, Henry. This chameleon is about to give birth, though. Oh, right. So, where's the slime? It's inside her, Henry. Oh, yuck! Hey, I thought all lizards had eggs. They do, but chameleons keep their eggs inside them to protect their young. The slimy white inside the egg helps feed the growing baby and makes being born go a lot smoother when the egg breaks open. Ah, uh, I do love looking at baby pictures. Here are some really amazing baby pictures, then. Hey, a jelly bean with legs. No, same size, but this is a baby wallaby. They're born when they've hardly developed. They can't even see yet, so the mother licks a trail on her fur for the tiny baby to follow. It leads the young into mother's pouch. There, the wallaby will stay for seven months until it's big enough to look after itself. It's one small step for a wallaby, one long slimy trail for a jelly bean. Henry, Henry, it's time for your news report. What? Now? Yes, now. Out of my way! Journal Lizard coming through! Tonight, wildebeest flock to opening of new mud baths. And Osprey put flights on hold due to bad weather. But now, our top story. The mystery surrounding a giant nest has been solved. Scientists had thought this enormous nest belonged to a new species of bird, but now believe it was made by bats for a thousand-seat dinner party. Experts have examined it in detail, revealing the nest is made from spit. Yes, spit! The winged workers were forced into making the slimy bat brasserie. You could call it cave labor, but it didn't stop there. The bats were also forced to cough up table decorations of the Taj Mahal, Sydney Opera House, Mount Rushmore, and all for three bugs a day and no coffee breaks. Financial experts fear the spit shortage could send slime prices skyrocketing. More later. But first, here now the sports. Fantasyland won. Lizards, zero. Rats. Actually, Henry, you were kind of right about one thing. That's amazing. I mean, uh-oh. Don't tell me these are bats. No, they may look like bats, and they even use radar like bats to find their way in the dark. But these are birds, cave swiftlets. The rock walls of their home are almost vertical, so they have an amazing way to stick their nests up. You don't mean with spit, so I was kind of right. Yep. In fact, they make the nests out of spit, flying around and around, spinning threads of saliva which harden into a kind of cement. Excuse me, but that's amazing. Maybe I could stick up my posters like that. <laughs> Yuck. Thanks. Sorry. Sadly, many nests don't survive. The weight of the birds pulls them down, or they're stolen for bird's nest soup. What? 
people eat them? <laughs> yes, even though they have no taste. Obviously. I mean the nests, Henry. Oh. 